Hi everyone, welcome to my Core 2 OCR January 2013 video. We're looking at question 9, which is about integration. And it's quite a tricky integration question because, first of all, the actual thing that we have to integrate looks quite horrible. And secondly, the limits that we are going to integrate between are to do with unknowns, A and 2A. Okay? So part I says, show that 3a cubed take away 5a squared plus 2 equals 0. And the information that we've got to base this on is this. So if we simplify what we're trying to integrate, this is 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus 4, all divided by x squared, which means that actually we can divide each term individually by x squared. And we know that this is going to equal 0. So each term will simplify. 2x cubed divided by x squared is just 2x. Um, minus 5x squared divided by x squared is minus 5. And to write 4 over x squared as 4x to minus 2 makes it much easier to integrate. Okay, So now we start the integration. To show that we're integrating, we use square brackets. Okay, The integrate sign shows us we need to integrate. It's very important you get your notation correct. So with integrating, we increase the power. Okay. I for increase. So we increase the power from 1 to 2 and divide by the new power. So we get x squared. If we just have a constant on its own, then we just put an x. That's because effectively we've got 5x to a 0. And the same rule applies. Now be careful with negatives. When you increase the power, you're going to go to minus 1. And then you have to divide by minus 1. So it's going to put minus 4x. The limits that we integrate between are 2a and a. Now when we expand our limits, we need to substitute in the biggest value first, 2a. Be very careful to make sure that you keep 2a in a bracket when you substitute it in. Okay? because it's 2a all squared as opposed to 2a squared. Now, x to minus 1 is a little bit nicer if you put it as a reciprocal. And now substituting in a, a squared minus 5a minus 4 over a. This is now going to have to be simplified. So we get from the first bracket 4a squared, being careful to square the 2 as well, minus 10a, minus 2 over a. And this negative means all the signs are going to swap in the bracket. Minus a squared, plus 5a, plus 4 over a. When we simplify this, we basically have to collect like terms. We get 3a squared, minus 5a, um, minus 2 over a plus 4 over a is just going to go to 2 over a. And now if we look back to the original question, we had to prove 3a squared minus 5a squared plus 2 is 0. So remember this was always equal to 0. And to make it look like our question, we need to now times both sides by a. So we get 3a squared minus 5a squared, 3a cubed, sorry, minus 5a squared plus 2 equals 0, as required. Right, so looking at the second part of this question, it says show that a equals 1 is a root of 3a cubed minus 5a squared plus 2 equals 0. Okay, it's a root if we substitute it in and we get 0. So, 3 times 1 cubed 
minus 5 times 1 squared plus 2 gives us 3 minus 5 plus 2 equals 0, therefore a root. The rest of this question says, hence find the other possible values of a, giving your answer in the simplified form. Now what we've just done is if f of a is this function, we've found f of 1 and it gave us 0. So by the factor theorem, x minus 1 is a factor. Okay. So what we can do is we can divide our cubic expression by x minus 1 and see what we get. So 3a cubed minus 5a squared plus 2 is our expression. Now be careful because we need placeholders. So instead of putting 2 yet, you need to have 0a and then your 2. Now the exam question has tried to trick you by using a's instead of x and I almost fell for it there. There's just a little tester. Um, so just put an a there. So we want to divide this by our factor a minus 1 to find our quotient. So how many times does a, our leading term, go into 3a squared? 3a cubed, sorry. And I just gave you the answer. It's 3a squared. So we put 3a squared in our answer line. And then we have to do 3a squared times by this to get 3a cubed minus 3a squared. Now we subtract. So we get 0 here. They cancel. And we get minus 2a squared. We bring down our 0a. And we look at the next leading terms. So we're thinking, what do we have to times a by to get minus 2a squared? And of course, the answer is minus 2a. So then we actually multiply this through by minus 2a. And we get minus 2a squared plus 2a. When we subtract here, we get minus 2a. And we bring down our 2, and so we get that we want to multiply by minus 2, which would give us our answer. Okay, so that means that if we were to factorize, we would have a minus 1 and 3a squared minus 2a minus 2 equals 0. So that means that this could be 0, which implies that a is 1, or this thing equals 0. So if that quadratic equals 0, we would have to think if we can factorise it. Now I gave you the clue before, and so we probably wouldn't be able to factorise it. And if you look at it, we can't. So what we need to do is use our quadratic formula, or complete the square. Because we're in core 2, we have our calculator, so the best thing to do is use the formula. So, A, B, C. Don't get too confused with the fact that we're using two different A's. I guess we could call that one A dash. So, our A solutions equals minus B plus or minus square roots of B squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we put that into our calculator. The plus version will give us one plus root seven over three and the minus version would give us minus 1 minus root 7 over 3. Okay, and your calculator does all the simplifying of thirds for you there. So that's our two possible answers. Now, always check you've answered what you had to do by rereading the question. So if we look back, we see another clue saying answer, and we've just found two solutions. 
So let's reread the whole question. And can you see? It says the positive constant A. So A must be greater than zero. Now, if we were to do the minus version, it would be less than zero. So our final answer is, since A is greater than zero, one plus root seven over three is A. Thank you for watching. I hope this is useful.